It's still the morning show here on Arise News, and now we take a look at news stories making headlines around the globe. The federal government has invoked a no-work, no-pay policy in response to a warning strike begun by resident doctors over the abduction of their colleague, Dr. Ganiat Pukwola, who was kidnapped from her home in the middle of the night eight months ago. The Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare says it's working with security agencies, including the Office of the National Security Advisor, to ensure her safe rescue. The ministry has called on all resident doctors to return to the nego negotiation table to find lasting solutions to the challenges plaguing the healthcare sector. All right, Rufai, return to the negotiation table. In fact, what the government is saying is that it's unfair that they embarked on a strike whilst negotiation was still going on. Do you think this is fair for them to invoke that policy? I don't think it's fair. And if the government said while negotiation was going on, they gave an ultimatum before the strike. They convened a meeting. Throughout the last two weeks, they were protesting and going everywhere to garner support for the plight of Dr. Gadiat. They were in every form of media. You didn't take their words seriously now. Then they now go ahead, they call for a strike. An injury to one is an injury to one. And it's not only because of Dr. Gadiat. Apart from the 20 doctors, there are many other doctors in captivity. They go to hospitals, I'm sorry, I'm saying this banding stories, whoever they are, or unknown gunmen, and kidnap these doctors because they use these doctors to treat the people they have kidnapped until they get their ransoms paid. And that's what they do. And doctors are not protected and you expect us just to sit down and not see anything. These doctors are doctors that are fighting for the lives of Nigerians and they care for a lot of Nigerians. So I'm speaking up for the National Association of Resident Doctors this morning. Dr. Ganiat has been kidnapped for over eight months. Ransom were paid, 40 million. They didn't still re return Dr. Ganiat, they just returned her husband. What did the government do in eight months? What did they do to bring back Dr. Ganiat Kukwola? Then we've not seen Dr. Ganiat Kukwola and we are complaining. Recently, the same thing happened in India. There was a rape and a murder of a doctor. The doctors went on strike. They made the country ungovernable. So when are we going to speak up for these doctors that end not great in the first place? The working working conditions are not great. Not too much equipment to work with because we know the state of our healthcare sector. And now they go on strike. You are saying no because you are still negotiating. The strike was the only way they felt their voice could be heard. And you are invoking no one, no pay. I know that's a government rule. That's something they will normally throw at people. But can't we also feel for the doctors? Get the doctors out of captivity. Get Dr. Ganya Popola out of captivity. And then we know we are talking here. All right, get Dr. Popola out of captivity. Dr. Bati. Well, the right to strike is one of the strongest weapons at the... Uh possession of trade unions, about working conditions and all of that. Article 3 of the International Labor Convention, 1949, says that a laborer deserves his or her wages. But at the same time, for you to get your wages, you have to do the work. Now, there's the Trade Disputes Act, sections 42 and 43 thereof, which the federal government of Nigeria uh, relies upon to say that, look, as a worker, for you to be paid your wages, you have to do the work. But if you don't work, uh, work the employer can decide to withhold uh, payment for work not done. Hence, the uh, uh, basic rule about uh, section, about uh, no work, no pay. Section uh, 42 sub 1, section 43 sub 1A of the uh, Trade Disputes Act. And the major cases in this regard will be Sanu versus federal government. There will, it will also be the Olufe Agba case. There's also the Olufe Agba case uh, about lecturers at the University of uh, Ilone, and, you know, who also went to the industrial court in this particular matter. In other words, the position of the law is that it's not compulsory that government says it will not pay you, that your employer says it will not pay you. It depends on the circumstances. The last time that the government of Nigeria talked about no work, no pay, was in 2022, when university lecturers went on uh, strike for eight months. At the end of the day, the, uh, the Chinumbu administration came and said, OK, you will get uh, is it four months. I don't know whether they have paid uh, the four months uh, you know, salary areas to ASU at this moment. So that's the uh, contest in terms of 
what the labor law uh, says. But in this particular case, the Association of Resident Doctors, they are not going on strike because of work conditions or labor conditions. They are saying that their colleague, Dr. Ganiya Kokuola, an ophthalmologist at the National Eye Center in Kaduna, was abducted along with his wife and a, with a wife, uh, with, with uh, her husband. husband, along with her husband and a nephew. The husband was released in April after ransom had been paid. And the doctors are saying, look, we want our colleague to be released. For us to be of value to this country, it, it should not be the case that people will just abduct one of our members. Uh, Dr. Ghania at Pukwola, at the time of her abduction, was breastfeeding. She was a mother of five children. So what we find here is that resident doctors are expressing solidarity about the condition of the Nigerian state and about the plight of uh, resident doctors. To that degree, in terms of how they are expressing empathy, I think it's easy uh, to understand their position. However, I think uh, the Minister of State for Labor, or is, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, Senator Nkiru Nyoje Ocha did well by meeting with Labor. She's appealing to them to give government um, a little more time. The government has a responsibility to ensure the security of everyone, whether a resident doctor or, a, or the nephew of a resident doctor or an ordinary citizen. This is a rob, in my view, uh, of the uh, matter. Unfortunately, a 2022 law says that in Nigeria you cannot pay ransom. The punishment for paying ransom is 15 years. But the resident doctors are saying, we want our colleague back. Doctors must be safe inside Nigeria. And I think in that regard, that point is understandable. Well, doctors must be safe inside Ni in Nigeria. And the truth is that our doctors are under threat if we're being honest with ourselves. And it's not just about insecurity. Yes, this particular tr um, strike action is triggered by the doctors asking the government to secure the release of one of their colleagues, Dr. Ganiyat Popola. But beyond that is the general concern, concern around the welfare and well-being of doctors in Nigeria. In addition to having to grapple what some would even term harsh conditions, harsh working conditions, at least when you compare it to their colleagues in other parts of the world, now they have to grapple with ensuring that they are not abducted while at work, whilst doing or discharging their duties. I think beyond that is just the government's response to their call since December. This is eight months afterwards. And you're saying that you're still on the negotiation table. You shouldn't still be on the negotiation table eight months after someone was, um, was, was abducted. If you were, we've seen how there's been swiftness in responses when it comes to someone of, you know, in politics, of the political elite, and of the, one of their children is abducted. We see the strength of the Nigerian um, of security agencies. We see e early release in many cases. But this seems to have just been handled with kids' gloves and have pushed the doctors to come out to go on strike against the Hippocratic Code, which is their first responsibility to save lives. Um, to save lives. So you can understand or imagine imagine to how much, you know, to, to the extent that this has affected them. But this also brings to light, since they're on a negotiation table with government, that the, the doctors in Nigeria need to be well looked after beyond the security, beyond securing the release of Dr. Pokola. It might be an opportunity as well for them to table the many issues that have belabored um, Nigerian doctors over the years, including the fact that we now have a national epidemic of migration, where now the government's response is to try and find ways to block them from going out. How would we incentivize doctors to stay back? If already they are talking about the fact that their welfare isn't guaranteed and then their lives are not guaranteed either because of the, their, their profession. So these are the conversations we need to have. I don't think that this no work, no policy, um, no work, no pay policy is right to invoke at this time. What the doctors want to hear from the government is support. And the fact that they hold our doctors in high regard and they will do anything to ensure that doctors don't have to go on strike, understanding the implications for the Nigerian people. So this morning, I'm hoping that the government will you know, take back this stance and actually respond to the calls of this doctor. They want their colleague back and most importantly, let the doctors in Nigeria breathe and let them have, you know, be, let them be incentivized to want to stay back and not jack back as we've seen in very recent times.